Today, we're looking at Robert Oster's Claret. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Diamine's Claret, blah. now Robert Oster's Claret is a magenta ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Delight Alpha with a medium nib to take my notes for this video. But before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is a chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately dunk it into water. And we see that this magenta runs up the page. It starts very light and it works its way darker. And as we've seen with a lot of magenta inks, we've got that very light blue across the top. Now the one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. I then put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds and we see a darker line across the bottom making it look like it might hold on a little bit. It then gets very light, pushes up darker as a magenta and again that nice light blue line. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to hold up on the page and more importantly how hard it might be to clean out of your pens. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I don't know that this is what I would use just because on that H, it starts to spread out and I fear that if I wrote something important, it might be missed and become blurry and unreadable. But that's not unexpected when you look at water. You put the water down and in 30 seconds, a great deal of that ink is coming up off the page and I can start to see some of the dots of the Rhodia paper that this is on. Pen Flush did very much the same thing as water, it's pulled a little bit more, a few more white spots coming through, but I don't think it would take flush to get this out of your pens. And bleach, as completely expected, obliterates this ink, leaving only a white spot behind. But please, for this ink, only use water. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Robert Oster's Claret has a viscosity of 1.78, which makes it a wet ink, quite a wet ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Robert Oster's Claret has an average dry time of 11 seconds, which makes it a faster drying ink. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub. I use a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750. I am slamming the crap out of these pens today, I'm sorry with a Goulet Extra Fine. Let's place this down nicely. Ah, sorry about that to everybody. I don't know. You get those days. Extra caffeinated. I don't know. Anyway, looking at Claire Fontaine, we get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Shading. Nice shading. A beautiful color with beautiful shade. The Extra Fine gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and beautiful beautiful shading all the way through this ink seven seconds to dry this is very manageable more than manageable look at those times medium medium gives us no feather no spread no halo no sheen and shade that matches the extra fine it didn't matter which pen it came out of the same shading the same tones 11 seconds to dry the scrubby shows us that we expect the same amount of color shading the same color variations which we get in the writing, the smear test says we could likely recover this. Looking at Tomoe River. Tomoe River gives us no bleeding. It gives us ghosting. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread. It does give us minor bits of haloing in the Robert where it's heavier, but it doesn't show up in an Oster or Claret. So there's parts that it's there. Uh, no sheen, no shade. Not in that. Other than the word difference. It didn't shade in a word. It was like the word Robert leveled out the same. The word Oster 
leveled out the same. Although those two words are different levels of tone. But it's not shading in the writing itself. Not bad. Not horrible. The extra fine gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shading at all with the extra fine. 11 seconds to dry. Medium gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. I want to say we get, you know, areas of shading going on. In Fox, it looks like I have some nice shading where it went dark and got a little lighter and got dark again. Jump starts light, gets dark, got a light spot in the middle. Dog gets dark and then to light and dark again. So we do get a little bit of shading that occurs in this. 19 seconds to dry. Looking at the scrubby, the extra fine gives us absolutely no color variation, but the medium does give little bits of color variation. It's not tremendous. We have to, It's this look far left, look far right. I don't think it's showing up as well on camera. Far left and far right for the medium. I'm hoping it's coming through. Anyway, I don't think you could recover this if you smear it. I think it's lost. I think if you wrote it on Tomoe River and you smear, you're done. Rhodia paper. Rhodia gives us no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade with the 1.1. Now it's a noticeably darker color than we get with extra fine. With the extra fine, we have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, but definite shading all the way through all of the writing. And seven seconds to dry. Now the medium, the medium gives us no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. And 12 seconds to dry. And it just seems to be a wetter pen thing. So when I took my notes, it, it did so much so well as an in ink. It does so much so well in its performance. It really does. It gives a lot of shade all over the place. The Delike Medium gives me area of shade, but I didn't get it the, sh the medium shade on uh, from the Jinhao. Different nib, different flow, yes. But I do see some of the shading with the Delike Medium. Just to have the idea that, yes, you still can get it. But I got a feeling with the wetter pens, you're going to lose it. The Medium Nib gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. And almost no shading here. This particular pen gave us almost no shading, but the Delike did give us shading. This takes 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for the extra fine shows us we're going to get plenty of color variation, and we do. The medium shows us we're really not going to get color variation, and we don't. The smear test says you would likely be able to recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. So I went and looked at Moji paper. The Moji paper didn't bleed except for where I started to get, you know, aggressive with the scrubby, and that's the beginning of bleed, and it doesn't really have uh, a ton of ghosting. Much more on camera. I know I don't always say it, but a lot of what happens, what is seen through the camera is not exactly the same as what's seen through the eye. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shading. Now the extra fine is a noticeably lighter tone. Very noticeably lighter. It gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, slight shading. It's so light here that we start seeing it get darker in spots on the, darker in spots on lazy, darker in spots on quick. So you do get a little bit of color variation here, even though it only took four seconds to dry. Now the medium, noticeably darker, way darker. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. And seven seconds to dry. The scrubby for the extra fine shows us that we can expect a little bit of color variation. And we saw little bits of color variation. And the medium shows us none. And we saw none. I think you could recover the extra fine. But I don't think you would be able to recover the medium on a smear if you smeared it while you were writing. So I decided to test this on some cheap papers. Why not? Let's look at Moleskin, because they've got a great reputation. I have them. Why not? And I still want to be able to find some inks that perform well on it. It's not the greatest paper. Some people love it. Let's put them on the right ink. This takes me a second to do, and 
eventually when they're all done, I'll say, hey, let's go find a good ink for it. This is not that. There's bleeding. There's bleeding even with the extra fine. The ghosting's not horrible. Shows up more on the camera, but the ghosting's not horrible. Don't put down a scrubby. Don't use a medium. The medium nib, it didn't have... Uh... Oh, jeez. It didn't spread. It definitely had feathering all over the place. But no spread. No halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine gives us no spread, no feathers. Just kidding. I'd like to see if I could one day find the no, the, the no feather moleskin. I doubt it. I always want to start the moleskin by being able to say no feather. I would go back to this notebook if I could find a no feather, no spread. There's no spread, but there is feathering. There's no halo, no sheen, no shade. Only two seconds to dry. I think if you're jotting a note, this isn't the end of the world. The scrubby shows us we get no uh, color variation. The smear test says you don't get to recover this if you smear it. I tested 20-pound copier paper, and to no surprise, it bled all over the place, but it didn't hit the page underneath, and it's definitely ghosting. The medium definitely spread, way spread, way, way, way spread. It didn't feather like crazy. It's feathered. It looks blurry, but it didn't feather like crazy where sometimes you get those big shooting out. It just, it spread so much it ate up its feathers. No halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine gives us some spread, some feathers. No halo, no sheen, no shade. One second to dry. The scrubby shows us no color variation. But good news, it won't smear. And that's all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Robert Oster's Claret, I would prefer to find an ink that will complement that color on the page. I've chosen Noodler's Bulletproof Black because it is truly a very dark black. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Robert Oster's Claret? I think the quality and performance of this ink are absolutely top notch, without a doubt. However, if I have to choose an ink that is named Claret, this would not be the one that I would go for. Not anything against this ink, it's just a color preference for what is available. This is a very good ink. I do like it. Just under the Claret label, I have others I would prefer. Thanks for watching.